Um, at this time, I'd like to ask for uh, the families uh, to come forward. And if I slaughter your name, uh, the baby's name or the parent's name, uh, please be patient with me. I haven't really been able to read a whole lot of things for um, a little bit of time, so this is the first time. And so we'd like to ask um, Sherwin Byron, Sherry Ann Getfield Byron, and Savea Getfield Byron to come forward, please. Come this way and come around. We'd also like to ask for Iman, sorry, Bright. Kim, help me out on this one. Where's Kim? I should have just had her come forward. You want to come forward, Monique, and help me out, please? Oh, the last name. <laughs> I would like for the family for Imani, Kanisha, and Bright to come forward. And the family for Roche, Kaylee, Georgiana, Thompson. So this would be Mom, Rosalie, and Dad, Kimani. Please come forward. I think we're supposed to have three babies. Is that the last baby that's coming in? <laughs> you know, one of the things I love about the church is that, you know, you could be late and still strolling. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Welcome to the Shiloh Seventh-day Adventist Church. Take your time and come on. And um, while they are coming forward, Take your time, but rush. <laughs> Come on, take your time, take your time, take your time. So the only thing we're going to add to, woo, 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 woo. It's, no, it's okay. You don't get to fall on my first Sabbath back. Let the church say amen. <laughs> He's not here yet? Is he on his way? Like within the next two minutes on his way? Oh boy. You know, I think we're going to do something a little bit different today. And I hope you all don't mind because we want to make sure that dad is here. So I'm going to ask you guys, just go and sit down for a minute, please. Uh, the email that we sent out, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, unless you, you want to preach today. <laughs> go ahead and take a seat in your seat. I think what we'll do is we'll move uh, the dedication. Uh, oh, there he is. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> No, it's okay. What we'll do is we'll move it closer to uh, the sermon uh, time to make sure that everyone is here. <laughs> this must be my first week back. Already we have our bloopers. Uh, so we will continue with our program as we normally would have it, and we're just going to shift our baby dedication um, a little bit later on in the program. Uh, I think we're going to try and do this baby dedication one more time. And uh, hopefully dad and mom are still here. Let's go around. If dad's here and mom is not, then we'll do it without mom. Let the church say amen. So Sherry Ann and Sherwin, if you could bring Savaya, Savaya uh, forward. Come on this way and come all the way up uh, the stairs, please. And Kanisha and Bright, if you can bring Imani up. And I think I got the um, pronunciation better this time. Uh, Chitty Berry, did I get it right? Did I get it? Well, even if I didn't get it right, you gotta pray for me. Let the church say amen. And then of course, Rosalie and Kamani, if you can bring Kaylee forward as well.
I'm going to help you this time. Because if you fall off the edge, I can't catch you. I don't have the energy or the strength right now. Let the church say amen. Some really pretty children that are here. And of course, the one week that I'm not going to be holding anybody's baby, they're all asleep. Oh, children can be a certain kind of way. I want you at home, as well as in the building, uh, to consider uh, in Genesis, where we find the creation story, we find something that is remarkable. And when I say remarkable, it's not the only thing that is remarkable. But what makes this particular story remarkable is how God has the capacity uh, to take something and turn it, or nothing rather, and turn it into a something. And for those of you that have been in church long enough, you know that God, he reaches down into the ground and he takes just dust, forms it, molds it, puts nostrils into it, eyes, hair, a, a shape, all of those things. God does that just with dust. And maybe today what we're talking about to all of the parents that are here we're talking about intentionality. You know, sometimes we wonder uh, why some people become great and others don't. And the reality is there are some variables, right? Sometimes, if given the opportunity, some people would have become the prime minister, the president, entrepreneurs, and the list goes on. But because of opportunity, some people are unable to do so. But generally speaking, if we're to be honest with ourselves, we know that wherever there is intentionality, where parents come together and they decide, this is what we would like our sons to be like, this is what we would like our beautiful daughters to be like, it happens only if you are intentional to get down to their level. You know, one of the things we don't always do so well in our culture, and you know, this is one of the reasons why I love Instagram, some of the conversations that we have with our children are way over their heads. But when God reaches down into the dust and forms Adam and breathes into his nostril and he becomes a living soul, the reality is, is that God does not bring Adam up to his level. God comes down to Adam's level and parents here's what I'm trying to tell you and this won't be a long one if you want your daughters all three of these beautiful young ladies to become everything that God wants them to be don't bring them up to where you are come down to where they are show them the practicality of life tell them and teach them that if it were not God breathing into them, they wouldn't be alive. We keep thinking that when our children grow up, that's the time that we have to give them a sense of urgency in terms of how important God is to their lives. But the word of God tells us to teach them when they are young who God is. Not only does God come down to their level, but this creation story teaches us of the importance of intimacy between parents and their offsprings. You can't talk to your child from a distance. You've got to not just come down to their level, but you've got to be with them as they are growing. And maybe this is important for us as fathers, because this first stage of, can I say this live? Breastfeeding. Let the church say amen. <laughs> Children are with mothers first because of the nature of what growth looks like. 
And at times as fathers, we think that when uh, children get older and they begin to run and talk, then we begin to chip in. But can I tell you, don't do the breastfeeding thing, but be there when they are young. Let the church say amen. <laughs> the reason being is that at every single level of development, if you are there, then you don't know them at that stage of their lives. Like mothers, as men, we have to know what the little creaky sounds make. <laughs> we have to know what that means. Because sometimes those little sounds mean that they are hungry or they are restless or they are about to get up. But if you are not there in their intimate space, you just pick them up and pass them along to mom. But can I say this as men? Recently, I heard a statistic several times over. And the statistic says this. The ideal situation for children to be formed in is where mom and dad is. See, even in a church, I can't get an amen anymore. That is the ideal situation. But the statistic that I also saw, Ben, and I hope you guys are going to hear me, is that in a situation where there is not a male and a female in the home, children are more likely to be successful if fathers are present. Now the reason why this is important is because we've grown up in a culture that says, there's nothing like a mother's love, but that's not what the data is coming back with, church. The data is actually saying that where there is a father that is present, he is more likely to help his children, whether daughters or sons, to become successful because there's nothing like a father's love. Mothers, I'm not saying, I'm just saying that when God in creation reveals himself as a father, as he develops Adam, he was trying to tell us something before the data caught up to the Bible that fathers are significant. Last but not least, after God shapes them and spends some intimate time, he gives them a sense of purpose by giving them responsibility. You know, um, there is a generation that is now getting older and they are going to be dying within the next 15 to 20 years. I'm talking to the mothers now. Um, the mother that we all grew up with was a mother who made sure that children were okay. Come on, keep saying amen. Even if you, I'm telling you the truth. Uh, the mother, the, we call them grandmothers now, and those grandmothers are beginning to fall asleep. Even my grandmother died while I was away. Um, during this sabbatical. Those women don't exist in the same kind of way. Right? I'm talking about the grandmothers that would decide to stay home with children versus pursuing careers, etc. I'm talking about the ones that would make sure that the cornmeal was pound it out so that there was no lumps in it. Keep saying amen. I'm in the culture. And mothers, here's what I'm saying. Don't allow Instagram to reshape what was working for us. I've had a lot of time to sit and think in that hospital room, and I'm the same, but I'm different now. What I'm saying to you is that we now live in a world 
where mothers are more into fashion and style than child rearing. And I know that there'll be some that will say, but pastor, are you saying that it's woman's work? No, 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 I already did the male piece before. I'm now saying to all three of you all that because you've decided to have children, girl children, you have to give them the best of you until they can take over for themselves. But if you both do it together, the likeliness of them becoming people that you can smile at when they become grown is greatly increased because just as you made these babies together, you have to shape these babies together. Thank you for waking up. And last but not least, can you please teach your daughters, all of you, to love the Lord? Don't teach them how to love you. Teach them that you are secondary to the God that put the air in their lungs. And when you do that, you will give them a greater desire than that of just this life, but in the life to come. Because no matter how good you are at parenting, you cannot raise perfect daughters. But what you can do is direct them to a perfect God who works with their imperfection and yours and mine. And here's the thing, you will never know the beauty of what family is going to look like on this side of life because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But if you are diligent, men, women, mothers, fathers, when Jesus comes, he's going to make your family look a whole lot better than it is right now because you're already beautiful. And I wish you could have seen, I may have been blocking it. One baby tried to headbutt her mother. Lord have mercy, we need to pray now. So I'm going to ask the elders and deacons if you could please take these babies um, by hand. And parents, as you stand there with your children, Please hold one another's hand and we're going to pray. To those that are watching online, Instagram is social media. It's not a real place. And my prayer is that this counsel that we've given to our parents for today, please take heed. The things that matter to the world are not the things that matter to God. And we have to continue to be diligent as a church. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Savea, Imani, and Roche. Three beautiful baby girls accompanied by their parents, Sherry Ann and Sherwin, Kanisha and Bright and Rosalie and Kamani. Lord, we pause to ask you to be with each parent that is here. We live in a world where there's this tug and war for power, for influence, for notoriety. But ra uh, raising children should be one of the few places where there is no tug and war because whatever we do together will be to the benefit of these beautiful young ladies. We ask in advance that you would touch each child from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. May each daughter that is represented here and held by the deacons and the elders of this church, may each one of these children grow up to become leaders in their own right. 
We're not just looking for uh, daughters who will just float through life, but we're looking for influencers like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, Lord. We pray that in every classroom that they sit in, when the teacher has in mind to put it based on alphabetical order, Lord, we pray that when they walk into those rooms, that they would have the favor of God and that they would be seated in the front row so that there would be nobody in front of their faces so that they could see the dry erase board, the smart board, the, the chalk board, Lord, every single time they walk into different spaces, may the enemy flee from their presence because they've been protected and formed and breathed into by God. And last but not least, Lord, we pray health over their lives. And we're not just talking about physical health. We're talking about mental health, psychological health, spiritual health, Lord. When the enemy tries to tell them that they cannot be whatever they are called to be because of the color of their skin, Lord, may they say, enemy, get behind me because you have no idea what God has in mind for my life. And because these parents have chosen to bring their children here to Shiloh, Seventh-day Adventist Church, may this not be the last time. The same bright mind that we've prayed over for their lives in the classroom is the same mind that we're praying over for their spiritual mind in the church. May their parents bring them to church because the truth is it's school, it's home, and it's church and as long as all three spaces are saying the same thing they may have the next Deborah the next Daniel the next Joseph the next David the next Paul the next Peter we have no idea but along with being bright minds Lord may they tell people about the God that they've been dedicated to today because we ask these things in the name of Jesus let everyone say amen at this time I'm going to ask uh, Monique Williams to come forward as our clerk to come and give away some nice gifts please so on behalf of Shiloh and the children's ministry, um, we'd like to present these little gifts to the family, specifically for the children. We have a gift and their dedication certificate inside. Moms and dads, I hope you please frame these certificates for them. Place it above their crib, wherever they sleep. And when they get to the age and they ask you, what's this about? You tell them, this was the day I brought you to the Lord. And I hope one day that you will come to him on your own. Amen. Amen. All right. On the end there. Okay. And by the way, um, if you would like to take pictures, you'll have to stay all the way through to the end of the service. Um, I have deacons that will be um, barring the door, so even if you try to leave, somebody might pump you in your head. <laughs> I'm the same and yet I'm different. Thank you. God bless you. Please return to your seats. These are some pretty babies. Oh, wow. I don't ever want to go back to this stage of life, but I do admit that these are some beautiful babies. Ah, 